James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here, we are back, as always, unless, uh, you know, something happens, some unforeseen peril. Welcome everyone to uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth, uh, formerly known as Progressive Discussions. I'm your host, James P. Madonna. Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Uh, and uh, we are coming to you live and recorded from the Newsletter Censored Re um, Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. Uh, this research center has been here technically since 1977 because I would like to introduce my uh, illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977 uh, and the director, of course, uh, of the Newsletter Censored Research Center, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this Labor Day weekend 2015, sir? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It happens to be Labor Day weekend. The last of summer. 2015, the unofficial ending of summer. Of course, the first day of autumn is like, what is it, uh, so September 21st or 22nd? They call it the vernal equinox. Already? Yeah, how about that? Well, Halloween decorations right. are already on the shelves. Uh, by, at least a month ago, they appeared. <laughs> no but, mention of the Trumpy stuff. Well, since Trump is still in it, to win it, at least he thinks so, uh, I, I predict that the Trump wigs will be the biggest Halloween seller of all time if, but it, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when the companies will start coming out with those goofy wigs, and uh, it will happen. But Donald Trump himself, with that fake orangey tan and that that, that smirk of his, the phony smirk and the hair color, he looks like a, a jack-off o'lantern. Excuse me, while I get the levity bells. The jack-off o'lantern. Mr. Trump <clears throat> would do well to uh, educate himself a little bit more on foreign policy. Well, uh, um, see... Mr. Hugh Hewitt cornered him the other day because he he didn't know some of the names of the leaders of ISIS and Al-Qaeda and wow. etc. Well he did a Ralph Crampton, he did a Hamana Hamana Hamana? Well bas no, basically what he said is, is actually true to an extent. Why do you have to know them all? You want to become president. Yeah, now there's a lot of stuff that you're not going to know well, that you, you will be introduced to well, how could you, by the Secret Service and etc. Well, how could you uh, memorize how, while you're, you know? How could you memorize oh, so many exotic names? Well, <laughs> I mean, a, I have I have people difficult. I have people in my fold from other countries with exotic long names. Well. I can't pronounce them or remember them. I have to shorten them, you know, like uh, give them a nickname. You know, or something. I, there's no way I can do it. But anyway, um, I I, oh, I want to first give tribute to the true meaning of Labor Day. Labor Day was not invented for uh, Americans to barbecue and and gorge themselves and get drunk and no. and, and run down to the beach for one last hurrah. Yeah. No, Labor Day. I think Labor Day is to commemorate and give honor to all the people who fought blood, sweat, and tears and died so you 
can have labor laws today and your five day work week and uh, and your uh, overtime pay and holidays and sick days and blah 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 and uh, benefits or whatever whatever's left of that I just want to salute all the people who have fought, died, blood, sweat and tears and to salute unions the Teamsters go Teamsters salute all unions on this Labor Day weekend which I am dedicating this show to all the people in the past that made it all happen and of course the uh, conservative Republicans the elitist one percent want to take away all that including your civil uh, rights the people who, who have fought hard and, and, and died for the civil rights the women's rights uh, uh, child uh, well that's part of labor laws child labor and all everything all the human rights and civil rights that uh, we the people so much so so uh, richly deserve and I want to give honor to that now I also want to say hello to my near dear friend in Osaka Japan Miho hello Miho uh, I, I enjoy your your lovely photos of uh, Osaka Japan Ooh. and yourself of course um, so you have any words on Labor Day weekend? Whom uh, did we fight for all those benefits? We fought uh, in the Industrial Revolution? Or was this afterwards? Always. Well, we fought, we fought the fat cats, I guess. The, the Our own government. Because Who, by the way, uh, they, they, side, they always sided with corporate. Yes, uh, they called out the police. They called out the National Guard. They called out professional strike breakers, etc., to kill the labor uh, leaders and etc. Now, the first time this happened, right? wasn't it when the coal miners sh uh, went on strike? Way well, back when? Who knows when the first strike took and, place? And the problem was that the union people were not prepared for it because if I was a union leader, I would have a, a a special uh, a, a, a hidden basic training camp to train them to be militarized and that for didn't work with Mr. Hoffa and for guerrilla guerrilla warfare that didn't work with Mr. Hoffa why Hoffa wanted to train union people as I'm sure soldiers. he had a lot of bodyguards it didn't work no I'm not talking about that I'm talking about the union people if they know they might go up against uh, violence with uh, the one percent they should be prepared uh, you know uh, how to how to uh, plant bombs a uh, guerrilla warfare like a ninja I think John Brown did that and he was called an insurrectionist and therefore gave the powers that be the imprimatur to go after him well the uh, the problem is that the um, the problem you don't is have we don't have the numbers you what, you th we don't know who's good and bad. That's listen, the problem. listen. All those uh, Pinkertons and the strike breakers. You know, you know what? I tell you what. Even the National Guard. Let's say the National Guard are like the cops. They they forget just where they came from, their roots, and they mm -hmm. and they and they side with the person who signs their paycheck. The governor. They signs the paycheck. Okay. Collectively, if we the people had enough militarized uh, 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 tough guys that were well armed and knew how to use their peace what they going to do what they, what are they going to do uh, against hundreds of thousands of people that are not pacifists like the little uh, didn't uh, 11 pigeon states, livered lily livered pusillanimous pitch weak ultra liberals are the didn't pacifists 11 states try that Where? in 1860 it was called the civil war you know, more Union soldiers. What you're talking about doesn't. Mu much work. more Union soldiers died in the Civil War than Confederate soldiers. Did you know that? So they must have done a lot the of Union damage. Union won the war by being uh, so-called rebels. They must have done a lot of damage. Well, damage or what? They lost the war. Because the Union had the industry behind them for for to give. There is no whatever. There's facts. They, they were a United States. Goddamn pigeon. 
you're you're going against ultra liberal pacifist way of thinking. It has nothing to do with that. Now well, then, stop well, it. Well, then just fall stop it. Surrender. I give up. I'm We're trying to explain something very important to you. All right, go ahead. Where's that the white the flag? the way you are thinking has not worked in this country or the world. Okay, all right. You have a Violence right. breeds violence. Oh, so what are you going to do? We don't know. We have to find out. You got to pray for the second coming of Christ to come now? It's not the only option. <sighs> Listen. Man, a lot. You guys have your... your approach yeah and I have mine and we don't know our approach. no we've not signaled in an approach you did no trained uh, military uh, personnel has ever won a guerrilla war you know like violence breeds violence now how do you stop the force? We don't know. Accept my thing here. We don't I don't know. agree with you about Fine, but that's your opinion. You don't you don't know. I'm telling you the facts of history. Violence breeds violence and has not worked. Nope. That's a fact of history, not an opinion. Alright, so you don't take out the biggest most sinister corporate CEOs you don't take out any Republicans in Washington you don't take them you don't take out uh, 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 you ought to listen to what you don't take saying. out nobody according to you, you taking out people listen. doesn't work exactly okay all right and you ought to listen to what you're saying because under the Patriot Act Patriot Act you'll be in jail for preaching what you're preaching. You uh, haven't learned that? Am, do I know people that are going to do it? No. Do I have the ability or the desire to do it? No. I'm just stating how I feel. That's all. Exactly. It's an opinion. But, right. you know, we are not actually interested in opinions. We are interested in what will work. Ah, so now you've you got a crystal ball. What will work? What did I say before? We don't know what will work. That is what we must find out. Well, what, well, what, uh, what will work is that every only every know. American, I don't care we how how so, son of a fucking god. We damn. only know that what you can't, are preaching what did not work, does not work. All That's right. all we know. All right. All I know what will work is that Americans realize whether you really want to do it or not. How do you I, do that? I don't care. Would you let me finish what I was going to say? Why go off onto a, a trail? You're not even know what I'm going to say it yet. It doesn't matter. The trail is unproductive. You see, you're a selfish person. You want to be in charge of this goddamn show. That's what it is. It has nothing to do you, with that. You got this ego like like these other people I know in my group. Oh, it's In my ego. fitness group. You to got quote, this fucking ego. To quote a fact that history you keep, is ego? You keep on interrupting me. I was going to say if people understood whether they want to do it or not, whether they're busy or not, if they understood the importance of all Americans to vote at every major election and, 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 and forgot about their apathy, just put it aside and vote, even the, even the idiots, if they would only vote. That's a, that's a big start. And we end up in the same spot. So voting is not going to... All right, all right. All right. What's your solution, then? Let what's your solution? Voting is what? not the answer. What's your solution? What did I just say? Voting is not going to do any... Oh, no, no, you no, heard no, it no, from no. Don, with William J. Eisenman. Voting won't do any good. We're not talking about voting. I did not answer anything no, about voting. No, no. Your answer was, we don't know what will work. We don't know what to do exactly. yet. Exactly. Bingo! And I'm saying a good way to start... Bingo! ...is that... Americans got over their their voting apathy and all got out there and voted. Yeah, you say things, but you don't know how to bring them about. How do you get people to get over their apathy? Well, how do you do uh, this well, magic? Do well, you have a magic wand? Well, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, I had a friend. Jesus. Right. I had a friend in the 80s who passed away, uh, uh, Dr. Charles uh, Corda. He was a psychologist, and he says. People 
that are afraid of the dentist they go to the dentist when the pain in the tooth is greater than the fear of the dentist uh -huh. when people are unhappy enough with their lives and and their that's one motivation ain't it you know uh, like if their life sucks and they're getting poorer and poorer and they have to and they have to scrape the bottom of the barrel mm -hmm. in it's, it's so deep that they're actually scra scratching the wood of the barrel yeah maybe maybe getting pissed off would, would make them say you know what I'm mad as hell I'm not gonna take it anymore I don't want to I don't want to vote for a corporatist like Hillary and all those those uh, 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 militant feminists that are only obsessed with getting a woman in the White House so on and so forth I'm gonna vote for somebody who's really different like Bernie Sanders. Uh, isn't that what Mr. Beale said in Network? And how old is that movie? And have we learned that lesson? That I'm mad and I'm not going to take it anymore. Well, I guess people want somebody else to solve their problems for them. Bingo! That's why they stay That's at, why they like dictators. That's why they stood at home. That's why they like a pastor to tell, teach them about yeah. the Bible. Yeah. Or, or a Joel Osteen or whatever. They want an, uh, 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 an evangelist to teach them about what's in the Bible. They're too lazy to read it themselves. Uh, um, and, you know, the point is that the apathy is not there is no somebody else there is no a genie in a lamp or Santa Claus that's going to solve all your problems you got to start with you you got to you got to be a part of it go to a town hall meeting and uh, and uh, protest the the big blowhard Chris Christie or 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 vote at every major election vote it's important it's extremely important even if the even though you're a party animal and you're you're hung over from the, the night before and and you got a, you got a, a whole a half a dozen chicky poos in your bedroom it's still important mm -hmm. as an American citizen to vote at every major election and I did something I didn't want to do I sucked it up I went to uh, the, the town hall and I change my affiliation from independent to Democrat because they won't let me participate in the primaries unless I am affiliated with a party right. I tried it they won't let me do it can't do it as an independent so in order for me to vote for Bernie Sanders in the primaries I had to change my affiliation so it's done it's done and that's that but you gotta vote that's a great start uh, since Many people don't like the idea of uh, pling, pling, ping, pling, pling, taking people out. Let's, let's start with something nice like voting. Uh, another, good, another good weapon is boycotting as far as corporations go, um, things like that. Oh, uh, uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Uh, I want to induct uh, the homemade uh, kitchen Chinese takeout in... Uh, Hasbro Kais, New Jersey on the boulevard in Hasbro Kais, New Jersey homemade kitchen I ordered um, uh, Kung Po uh, shrimp with brown rice and they loaded it up with a uh, diced vegetables and celery and such and I only got maybe a dozen small shrimp but this is a pattern of many businesses like this it seems to me even Main Street businesses, mom and pop businesses, uh, many corporate chains. There seems to be a a way about them where their customer service is just going way downhill. Like they don't care about their customers. They they act like they're doing you a favor by having you in their store because if you have a problem. It's a lot tougher nowadays to rectify the problem as a customer because they simply made their sale. This is their attitude. They made their sale. Fuck you. I got the money. I don't know you. Uh, um, uh, there's a lot of them like that. Um, you know, chiseling the customer, not giving them their money's worth. Um, if you have a problem and you bring something back, it could be a, a small store, it could be a, a corporate chain. They ask you a thousand and one questions about why you're returning this. Well, 
you gave them one reason, you shouldn't have to give them a, a, a dozen other reasons. You know, it's like, they just don't give a shit. Uh, the place over here, um, New Jersey Exotic Pets, they, they'll sell somebody something, the animal will die. Mm. Oh, not even an apology, screw you, made the sale. Yeah, they don't say like, well, I'll give you something else, I'll give you store credit. Nah, they don't mention anything about store credit. They, their prices are insane. They change the prices from week to week. One week it's one thing, then they jack it up another 10 bucks. The next week it's like, what is this, stock market or retail? So my beef is with retail, American retail businesses today. You, you're, you're underhanded, you're unethical, you don't care about the customer. Customer service on a whole is way down. So I induct American retail business and I'm I'm bashing the little guy, the mom and pop stores on Main Street, just as much, sometimes more than the corporate chains. Going back, that's it, to politics and voting and getting people to yeah. do these things. Sticking together. You have to remember one important thing. Boycotters, yeah. Before man can think about politics. Right. His belly must be full. Right. He must have shelter. Right. And he must have... Animal skins on his back. Clothes. For the, yeah, when, it, when the weather right. gets cold, yes. So you have that particular problem. Now, as it relates to people who already have those things and are party animals, so to speak. Yeah. These are people who are probably insecure and uh, wouldn't know, you know, whether to vote for a rock. So instead of embarrassing themselves, they'll just avoid it entirely. They'll so they'll you avoid got it. these things to bang your head again. They'll they'll avoid they'll avoid it entirely, and and also what someone said. Bernie Sanders in, in that house he visited in Louisiana. You know, there, there are um, second, even third generation Republicans living in the South mm -hmm. that they're honestly afraid of, of doing something different from what their family has been doing for decades. They're just afraid of the change. Again, insecurity, like, like uh, Dr. Bill said. Well, we know that Republicans don't like change at all. Right. But there's bigotry. They're suspect But of the it. Republicans in the red states campaigning feed off of the bigotry that's already there with these people. You got some of these people who are like the supporters of Ben Carson right now. Or, or the white supremacists that love Donald Trump. No, I'm not talking about the same thing. Right. The supporters of Ben Carson. The Uncle Tom believe the Republican Party is the same as it was in 1860. They do not and are not aware that a massive change occurred around 1965 when basically Republicans became Democrats and Democrats became Republicans. The Dixiecrat. The Civil Rights uh, Movement. Yes. Yes. Uh, brought the the racism out in the open and they switched so parties. So today's Republican Party is not what it was in 1860 under Abraham Lincoln. Or it's or not okay. like Eisenhower. Or even Ike. You know? You know, but... Uh, well, that's because at that <laughs> time, at that time in Ike and etc., you had, you had, didn't have, you had, a, you had conservatives in the Democratic Party, you had conservatives in the Republican Party. Unfortunately. You had the liberals in the uh, Democratic Party, you had liberals in the Republican Party. But the rich paid, the rich paid their fair share in taxes during Eisenhower. That helped the economy a lot. Well. Back then. You know. We don't know what, actually we don't know what a fair share is for Oh, really? The Cokies. What's their fair share of paying taxes? Well, what was the, ori what was the original tax rate 
on the rich, 91%? 90%? It started at 2%. <clears throat> so what are you trying to say? That uh, let's not let's not be too hasty when we tax the Koch brothers? Is that what you're trying to no. say? No. Why do you uh, but, uh, put these ideas into what I just said? I said we have no idea. We don't know if it's 94%. We don't know if it's 78%. Well, we don't know if it's 56%. Well, they're sure, but it ain't what it is today. No, they're sure as hell not paying their fair share now. Okay? That's what I'm saying. No, I would not uh, give any multi-billionaire the benefit of the doubt or any compassion whatsoever. Because they've had a, even if they've, they've had a holiday, a tax holiday for right. like... 40 years. I mean, even if a multi you gotta make that up. Even if a multi billionaire did pay the, the 90%, guess what? He would still be most likely a multi billionaire. I mean, he still would be living high on a hog. So, to feel, to listen to Republicans and feel sorry for them, you know, they want you to feel sorry for them and they talk about, the, again, they mentioned the Reagan is the Reaganomics lie about the job. Creators and the trickling down. They did the same crap. It works. They're going to keep doing it over and over. And, and why does it work? Because Americans have become numbskull, imbecile, brain cell deficient entities. Because if you had common sense, like or well, as you said before, they do what their parents and grandparents and generations have done. Remember what you said before about early man, <coughs> whether he be a cave dweller or not. Early man's I didn't say nothing about that. Well, you said the basic uh, desires of humans were no. I said a needs. full belly needs the need the basic needs. Well, that's better. That's more important than a desire. Right? That's ba correct. Basic needs. If the you want to get desire is a want. If you want to get technical, these are needs. I'm trying to stump old James P. Madonna. You, you want to get technical? I'll get technical. All right, the needs. The needs. Food. Adequate food. Shelter. No. Adequate food. Jerking off. Well, what else no. is there? What did I say was second? Sh food. Food and is first. Clean water. Clean water. water. Together. Uh, uh, not shelter? Yeah, shelter was second and clothes was third. That's what I just said! Well, fine. You contradicted me every little chance I you get. I didn't contradict. I wanted to make sure. All right. That it was placed in proper uh, order. Enough food. Sustenance. Food and water, shelter, belly full. belly full, clothes. Not the belly full that this uh, food pantries want, uh, give the homeless. I mean, uh, crap. That's not, that's not belly full. Early man ate a wholesome uh, diet, believe me. Uh, anyway, um, basic needs Basically. were met. Now, isn't that similar to the uh, poorest sections of Kentucky that vote Republican? They're poor and destitute. Their basic needs are in question. That's correct. And keeping them at that way and allows them to control them, doesn't it? Yes, and guess what? Thank you. As much as they're suffering by, mm -hmm. by lacking their basic needs, these brain cell deficient inbred motherfuckers still vote Republican and they still re-elected ugly turtle face Mitch McConnell. They still and, voted him back in. And Ted Cruz. Oh, down in, in Texas. Oh, excuse me, I'm talking, you're talking Kentucky. Uh, uh, Rand Paul. Rand Paul. Well, Ted Cruz is another, He he's part of another little, um, <laughs> I just, see they are making a, uh, Making a uh, an issue about him maybe being an anchor baby, etc. Yeah, yeah. He I may can, not be actually. He may not uh, be eligible to be in the Senate, and certainly not eligible to be a presidential. Well, I'm candidate. certainly glad that some so we'll some progressives out there are going after Republicans right after right for the jugular vein. I'm so happy they're getting. They're growing a set of balls and going after them. This is what you have to do to a, a bully, to a selfish person. You got to hit them hard and hit them low. Didn't Newt Rotney say that or Vince, uh, Vince Lombardi say hit them hard, hit them low? That's why there's a lot of knee damage in the NFL. 
You got to hit them hot. No, hit them low. low meaning in the, you got to hit them. Hey, they roll up their sleeves and they mudsling. What better way to get back at a, at a, at a, at a right winger than to, than to lay the facts on them and, and expose them if they have to be crooked? That's the first Obama step. never did it. Obama could have exposed all the racist Republicans that were out to put his head on the chopping block. First he step. could have exposed every single one of them on national TV, and guess what? He didn't. A fault of, the, of, of Democrats. He did not use the bully pulpits. No, no, no. You're getting restitution for somebody wanting you. If With the bully pulpit. The bully poop pulpit. Well, that kind of demonizes the, the president. Bull. Has the bully pulpit. The bully pulpit. He can pul speak any time against any subject. Right, right. That is right. He you use the bully pulpit. In other words, oh really? You're making my life miserable, and you're obstructing me based on the fact that I'm a black man in the White House. I tell you what. I'm going to go on national TV, and I'm going to speak to the American people and use the bully pulpit. I can also executive order and veto the hell out of the Republican Congress. I can do that. Oh, they're so pissed off about the Executive orders are not the way the Founding Fathers expected this government to be. Guess what? The Founding Robert. Fathers did not specifically wanted to keep religion out of politics, number one. Number two, what about G.W. Bush's uh, uh, executive orders, and uh, didn't he use a lot of them? He also was on vacation. Quite a bit. A lot. Oh, they don't look at that. Oh, yeah, back to the Founding Fathers. Oh, they specifically said no church and state combined. No way, no how. Yes, but over the years, the right wing Supreme Court and other courts they don't like to hear that. They, look, look what they're doing down with this. So uh, we're going to read about. Well, her. they misquote the Bible. Number the, one, uh, the woman Kim Davis in Kentucky. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about All it. Right. But we're going to. I want to say right now, is that her lawyers, they're up there now, uh, 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 painting her. As a Rosa a, Parks. A martyr. They're turning. A religious martyr. The right wing religious zealots, nuts, cultists, whatever you want to call them, the whole Republican Party, especially the religious zealot, cultists, are making uh, Kim Davis into a modern day white Rosa Parks, which she is definitely not. She is definitely not, no Rosa Parks. They are making her into a martyr. What does that mean that if you have a job for the federal uh, or state government that you have the right to be prejudiced against, discriminate against somebody? Yeah. You are paid by the government to do your job. The you, Bible says, yeah. render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Render unto God that which is God. But they, the, she is in a job. But the right, which is secular. Exactly. Okay. Now the right wing, being that they constantly uh, 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 misread or, or misinterpret the Bible and the Constitution, they 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 don't want to really know. They they really don't want to read it. Uh, this woman is taking it upon herself to mix church and state. She is not doing her job, which she's paid to do. And she's a phony baloney Christian. And she is a, a counterfeit hypocrite. And uh, according to the information I see online, she is being very well exposed, which I'm happy to hear that uh, yeah. uh, and read it too. But they're making her into a martyr, a Rosa Parks. Of course, your Rick Santorum and your Ted Cruz's, all your religious nuts, Mike Huckabee, they think that she was doing the right thing. No. If she was doing the right thing and upholding her religion, she would resign. So she would not have to give out certificates I posted to gay. I posted a banner today that I thought was cute on the uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth group. It was a, a, a waitress from Red Lobster holding up her a tray of meals. Mm -hmm. And she says, uh, something like uh, 
Hi, I'm your waitress today. My name is uh, Kim. Hello, Kim. Uh, uh, I am, um, because of my of religious freedom, I am not going to serve you any shellfish. I am not going to serve you any shellfish. So you must or order. Shellfish, you must yeah. order things that are not shellfish, because in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. shellfish was considered unclean. In Leviticus, right? There was a good scene on uh, the West Wing. So. Remember the West Wing? I, I never watched it. Well, I never did either, but there's a great scene I saw last night on Facebook. <coughs> and it was this woman, and she did something. That's against my religion to do that. And the president, what was, what's his name who played the president? Whatever. He led into her, and he said, well, should, you know, about Leviticus, this, that, and the other thing, should I... Should I kill my uh, my uh, my wife because she put the two different uh, garments together, which is condemned in Leviticus? Should I stone such and such for doing such and such? And then he, he did about four or five of them. And then she, of course, and then he and then he looks at her and says, "You know what? Also, when you're in the presence of the." When you're in the presence of the president, you don't sit, you stand. So she got up from her chair. In other words, he put her really down. Now, those laws of that nature, not counting the Ten Commandments and etc., but those particular laws no. were only <clears throat> for ancient Israel so that it would be a guiding light on the hill of nations and they needed, back then. And they needed all the guiding lights they can get. Okay. But the, uh, the uh, um, uh, but, you know, it's still part of religion and religion is unproven. You can't make, you, you know, it's uh. Well, that's why uh, you can't put it into law. You know, you? Republicans sure Jeez. love uh, Republicans sure love the cherry pick from the Old Testament. I notice. Yes, when it suits their purpose. They never read the whole story behind around mm. the verse. They mm. never mm. analyze the story. They or the go, context even of the verses. Yeah. Anyway, everything you you people have heard about trickle down economics and the job creators was always a lie. What we have is siphon up to the top twenty percent. Economics, yeah. capitalism, the devil's economics. Yeah. This is a siphon. And I would like to uh, do something uh, in honor of, well, sarcastically in honor of all the uh, the popular right wing uh, zealot religious cultists, uh, conservatives of the Republican Party. You're Mike Huckabee. You're Rick Santorum. The needle uh, needle nosed uh, Ted Cruz. Um, who am I? Well, Pat Robertson is really irrelevant right now. Um, who am I leaving out? Yeah, the, the religious nuts that are making Kim Davis into a martyr, as well as the Ro Rosa Parks. Uh, I think you should all get up on stage uh, when you're campaigning and take up serpents. I think you should all take up serpents. Look at me, I'm an evangelical zealot. I'm taking up serpents. We see what happened to that gentleman whose faith was misplaced like that, uh, and the snake bit him, and he thought he had faith, Yeah. and he didn't want to seek medical attention, Right. so he died. He's killed it. Yes. He's to, he, he, he has resumed room temperature. Because he didn't really have faith. Now how could you, how could you get faith? from a counterfeit, a phony baloney religion. So obviously, when the snake bit him, he was going to die. Bingo! You it see, goes without saying. Speaking of um, ridiculous, phony, counterfeit Christians, uh, did you just see that video of Reverend Ike that I posted? No. Oh, you didn't oh, you see it? Okay. Yeah, you, you'll probably see it tonight. I, I I was talking to. Yeah, her. when you post those things. At night, late. Yeah, that's why I didn't see it. Yeah, no, it wasn't that late, but you probably. I'm off at two. 
I don't know. I don't remember, but I, I know I, I'm I, usually I, playing chess, not the Facebook it was, at it that was, time. It was underneath some of the, you know, one of the latest uh, uh, banners, you know, with their nonsense, religious nonsense. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Kim Davis or if it was Needle Nose, Ted Cruz, but um, um, I was having a conversation with a member, a chat, and uh, we were talking about phony counterfeit Christians and uh, about uh, how evangelists use the word tithe to sucker you into giving the money to them and then they turn around and they live uh, the high in the hog the high in the hog the good life you buy them the car you buy them the house you buy them this that the the private other thing. jet the mansion Jets, the, yes so yes. you know I posted the uh, video uh, about Peter Pop Peter Popoff's miracle spring water and he, he was he he laughed hysterically. He says, "Yeah, he goes on late at night." Yeah. Said, and we're talking about him. Then I mentioned when I was a kid, I used to watch the Reverend Ike. Yes. With the Rolls Royces and everything. So I found an old Reverend Ike um, sermon. You know, when during his TV show when he was young, and he had this bright pink. Uh, Jacket, sport with a, coat. With a I love it. Pink, I love it. The black dress shirt, and he had a huge matching pink bow tie. Oh, well that, that I could do without. But it was pink as pink could be, I man. And, he, and his hair was all shiny and curly and everything. And he was uh, pretty much talking about visualization, hey, how you can make your dreams come true, and you can make things happen by visualizing it and all the power doesn't come from outside or up in up in the sky all everything all the power of, of God it comes from within you mm. it's all inside of you and you can make it happen I don't think the God of the Bible likes that would visualize it by visualizing he wants you to ask him for help not you do it yourself yeah well well That's Reverend why they, Adam yeah. and Eve were thrown out of the garden yeah well, they took it upon themselves to decide what they want to do in the future yeah. instead of listening. So it wasn't, it, it's not about self, no. like the Reverend Ike was saying. No. About. No. Sorry. Yeah. But wasn't Tony Robbins uh, all about that? Self, 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 That's self, self? Correct. They are motivational speakers. Yes, they are about that. All about self? This, yeah, the self can do this, can do that. That's all I, I, I stuff. God ain't about I, I, I. Yeah. Oh, and there's definitely, hey, being egomaniacal is not reserved for men only, believe me. Especially in fitness. A lot of these uh, liberated feminist chicky poos that uh, go to the gym and lift weights and all that. Some, this one, one woman, all she does on Facebook is post things about herself. Her is she... Is she well tattooed? Also, she, she's not tattooed. She's oh. just a she's a big strong. Because they usually are big strong strapping um, Scandinavian woman, Ooh. older woman. But it's always like you know her squatting or her doing a deadlift or her uh, uh, her doing this and that and different poses, and then she'll take photos of herself like a mm -hmm. uh, little bit slightly risque or and then and then she's got her following of people saying clicking like and saying oh you're gorgeous oh you're beautiful if i if i if i posted anything that closely resembles being a critique correcting her she totally ignores it or uh, or you know it, it, it's like it, it's upsetting she wants to hear she what wants to would, what would you expect from an ii I person she wants to be, it sounds like she wants to be petted all the time. You're wonderful. You never look better. Oh, no, you no, you, you. Maybe not petted with a hand. No, no, you're, you, you're losing stuff. body fat. Yeah, your shape, your, your glutes look great. Oh. Your, your ass, your hips, your, your chest, your, your arms. They don't want to hear uh, no. about the fact that her diet happens to have too many refined carbs, Ooh. which is why she is still puffy and a little bloaty. 
In other uh, words, they don't, you can't give them constructive criticism. No, 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 you cannot give but constructive, constructive criticism to an I.I. I person. But constructive is the logical thing to do. But I.I.I. I, I is not logical. I'm a man so, of science. You know. Oh, you mean their attitude. Yeah, so how are you going to get past that? So you can't try to help them. Like constructively, they are incorrigible. Like telling as them, God said. telling them about their diet is co is the reason why they are still puffy and non-productive. Yeah. Okay. Non-productive. Yeah. Non-productive. Well, when I saw pictures of her gobbing uh, uh, fruit jam uh, preserves mm -hmm. onto her whole wheat cracker, putting a thick layer of of uh, raspberry uh, preserves on it. Uh, it, Out of a jar with all that sugar? I, it kind of gave me the eye. Well, she was bragging that she was putting fruit on her. <laughs> Not from the cracker. jar. It gave me the idea that her struggles with trying to get muscular definition lies in her diet and her puffiness. And well, did we not just go through a period when the government uh, issued the pyramid diet, etc., and now they've issued something entirely different? And a lot of people don't understand what should be the actual diet. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, people are using the word pa paleo diet often. Is this another word for the Atkins diet? No. Paleo, Paleo is, is what you are talking about before, the caveman diet. Well, the hunter-gatherer. Well, isn't the caveman diet the the uh, high-protein, low-carb, ketogenic? No, because ketogenic? the caveman, <laughs> he also picked the stuff off bushes and cherries well, and raspberries. To, you have a lot to. of carbohydrates. No, you have the energy no, back there. No, you, yeah. you, don't, you don't demonize whole foods from a fruit tree or a vegetable. You did, I'm no. saying that is what... That is what accumulated into your body at that time. Listen, when Atkins, when the late great Robert C. Atkins put an obese person on the Atkins diet, that's only at the beginning that they can't have any carbs at all. That you're supposed yeah, to eventually nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying have about complex that. carbohydrates. Nobody's saying about that. The hunter gatherer ate what he could. He was a hunter-gatherer. What? If, what? He, if he if he stumbled upon a a, 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 a a meat kill one day, ooh ooh, you know that you ever watch the Duck Dynasty? Yeah. Well, these guys go along and they'll pick up roadkill and they'll cook it up for themselves. Yeah, but you know what? These hillbillies they know how to tell how old a roadkill is. The other day they had a show on the. They had the guy make rattlesnake sausage for them. But they know, you see, they, yeah, they live off the fat of the lamb, but yeah. they, they know instinctively about how to, how to examine roadkill and say, you know what, this roadkill. Yeah, well, I would too no. if it's goddamn flies all over it. I don't want this shit, you know. Yeah, I, I've seen Get one where the, guy, where the guy found roadkill that was freshly <laughs> killed it. But what I'm saying is, at least early man, when he ate carbs, there were whole complex carbohydrate carbs with fiber in it. Your root vegetables, your fruit off a tree. You know what I mean? It's like, it's okay to have high fiber whole foods, but not refined carbs like the woman was saying, was eating and showing pictures and then she says, She's like, you know, I can't, oh, I can't seem to shake off this little bit that I got, and, you know. And first of all, refined carbs, what the, what it does to a woman initially, is water retention. When you go off the refined carbs, and you go to low carbs, the first thing that happens is you lose water, the puffiness of your water retention. Water. Then you go into ketosis. Water. Now, ketosis. guys like. I debate with Mario Petrus, He's, he seems to want to always combine calorie restriction with mm -hmm. ketogenic. Aren't they two opposing points of view? Yes. Uh, Dr. Atkins used to say you could eat 300 more calories and still 
lose weight. Based on ketosis. On his diet. Based on ketosis. Yeah. So, mm. calories don't count in that instance. Okay. Do we have time for the Kim Davis? No, we don't. Because uh, we were long-winded. Because we, we, we disputed. Um, all right. We're going to go to lunch. And uh, when we come back from lunch, uh, we will start with this uh, Kim Davis. There's always something going on with the right wing. There's always uh, somebody in the spotlight. You know, before it was Caitlyn Jenner, and now it's Kim Davis. <laughs> you know, but uh, anyway, and Donald Caitlyn Trump. Caitlyn Jenner is right wing? No, no, what I mean is Donald, before, first it was Caitlyn Jenner all over. Then it was Donald oh. Trump all over. Now it seems like this Kim Davis is all over, you know. Yeah, the, she's got her for her 15 minutes of fame. Right, exactly. You know, uh, at one time all we used to hear about was Justin Bieber. Now you don't even know. Nobody ever says his you name. You think she's going to sit in the can for 30 days? No. Every every conservative in, in creation is going to bail her ass out of there, man. They're going to do something. They're going to. The, the lawyer is screaming. Well, you could accommodate her. You could accommodate her. She she don't have to put her name on. Well, three other clerks have now been giving out the certificates. They're doing their job. Bingo. Yeah, that's your job. She could have done her job too by either yeah. uh, resigning or going in the back room and letting the other clerks Listen, do it. You have a secular job. You you fail to do your job. Isn't that like insubordination or just not doing your not doing your job you were paid for? It's not rendering onto Caesar that which is Caesar's. But she's paid to do a secular job. That's yeah. her job. That's her job. Not to, to to inject her personal feelings into the job. That's correct. You know, especially right unproven feelings coming from religion. Yeah, even more. Now we you we you will see how to defeat a conservative Bible verses. Simply click the pause button, read and learn. Followed by our voiceover artist, William Hamilton Morrow III, with promo. And then we will be back cool. with the show, starting with this this Kim Davis drama. <laughs> Labor Day weekend, 2015. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay, we are back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrill III.
for your words of wisdom and promo. <clears throat> and I just want to tell everyone, I usually do this at the beginning of the show. Everything we speak about on this show politically is part of our new series. Well, it's not so new anymore. Capitalism in a conch shell. Capitalism in a conch shell, there is the conch. And I, I get many messages from the great beyond by listening to the, the conch. The progressive conch. Now we discuss this rather ugly, a nauseating woman. Married four times. By the name of Kim Davis, right? Married four times. Sink our teeth into this reading. Let's sink it, brother. Can't be that ugly. Well, maybe Married the, four times. maybe the paper bag kept on falling off of her head. That's why her husband's left her. Oh, the liberty belt. Gotta maybe, love him. Maybe it was her attitude. Or her face. Well, they must have knew what she looked like. Mm -hmm. A jailed Kentucky clerk <clears throat> asserted that marriage licenses issued without her authority on Friday to gay couples in Rowan County are void and not worth the paper they are written on because she did not authorize them, oh. her attorney said. She did not authorize him. She she's blatantly uh, uh, using her own personal prejudices in, in her in her secular job, and she needs to authorize him. Well, she's the head. She's the one that was elected. <clears throat> she county well, clerk. She's the county clerk, and because of her religious freedom, she has the right to discriminate, even though the law says gay people. And get married mm -hmm. in Kentucky in the United States in the United States but she overrides that yeah because she didn't they do that in because the old she days? said so in the old days before 1965 mm -hmm. down south mm -hmm. when they wouldn't serve blacks and they wouldn't let them sit in the front of the bus yeah, but even after the civil right? even after civil rights laws were in place, uh -huh. people still mistreated black Americans. Yes. They still discriminated. Yes. When Lincoln freed the slaves, I always wondered. Now, if you're a slave and you're free, and uh, nobody nobody's coming forth to offer you a job and a place to live. And, 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 and you know all these crackers in the whole region are all racist. Mm -hmm. Where the hell do you go? Exactly. Where do you take your family? Where do you live? Where, exactly. do, you, where do you live on? Where do you, where do, you do? <clears throat> I guess you go north. I mean... And then what the Republicans do? They blame him for being lazy and the moocha. Well, they blame all all okay. poor people, uh, right. all people that are not fortunate, yeah. are not, ble are not blessed with being born into a wealthy family with a silver spoon in their mouth. They blame all of them as being moochers and lazy. Cause they, because they don't want to take care of them, that's their excuse. Oh, but they want to take care of that little embryo. That little embryo that uh. breeds like a fish. And what about the fertilized, sunny side up egg? What about the fertilized little egg? That's no different than a fertilized chicken egg in your in your omelet. They they want to protect that, but if you're a, a child that's already born, mm -hmm. unless you're rich, because then they don't have to take care of you. you know, exactly. They don't care. They don't care about you. Kim Davis. Kim Davis. <clears throat> now wears an orange jumpsuit. Which is an improvement. And has already been doing Bible studies with herself. Oh, herself? Yeah. So she talks to herself. In jail. Oh, my God. I'm sure the inmates love that. 
Her attorney, Matt Staver of Liberty Council, told reporters after meeting her behind bars. He said Davis is in very good spirits <laughs> and is prepared to stay as long as it takes to uphold her religious freedom. Her religious freedom to impose it on other people and be a bigot. She is not going to resign. Okay, so she'll just have to be fired. She's not or going. He, she can't be fired. Or she has to be impeached. Impeached, I'm sorry. Correct. She She's elected. elected. She's elected, so she must be impeached. Correct. Which is a much longer process. She's, and by the way, I believe she's a Democrat. What? I believe that's what I heard. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. It gets carefully. more confusing. Listen to me very, very carefully. Very carefully. No, we're not hunting wabbit. <laughs> All you people out there that grew up as a Democrat and are pro-Democrat, there's a lot wrong with your political party. There are there are a lot of sellouts and a lot of crazy people and a lot of bad, dishonest people that are Democrats. They're not all Republican. So it's not about party affiliation we're talking about here. Continue. She's not going to sacrifice her conscience, so she's doing what Martin Luther King Jr. wrote about. <laughs> In his letter from the Birmingham jail. She's quoting Martin Luther King, a, a, a bigot like her. Which is to pay the consequences for her decision. Oh, well. Meanwhile, her lawyer said she's, he, is preparing to appeal to the U.S. District Court Judge <coughs> David Bunning's contempt finding as one of several legal challenges on her behalf. At least three gay couples received marriage licenses on Friday from one of Davis's deputies. Embracing and celebrating after repeatedly being turned away before Davis was jailed on Thursday. So what, what's next after this? A Satan worshiper will, will cry religious freedom uh, 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 because like they want to do something bad and break the law and do something evil and wicked. Oh no, you cannot, you cannot put me in jail because it, it was, it's my religious freedom for committing such heinous acts because I am a devil worshiper. I mean, I mean, when you think about it, that's what it leads up to. Religious freedom for this one, religious freedom for that one. Before you know it, everybody's is doing all kinds of bad, nasty things because of religious freedom. Marriage licenses in Kentucky usually have the elected clerk's signature on them. Those handed out on Friday lack any signature. The Rowan County attorney and lawyers for the gay couple said they are still legal and valid. When the judge was asked if the licenses will be considered valid without Davis's authorization, he said it was up to the gay couples to take that chance. William Smith Jr. and James Yates, a couple for nearly a decade, were the first through the door. Deputy Clerk Brian Mason congratulated the couple, shook their hands, and accepted their fee of $35.50. Yes, yeah, so Kim Davis reserves the right to be above the law, more or less. Yates then rushed across the courthouse steps to hug his mom. Civil rights are civil rights! And they are not subject to belief! I don't know why people, straight and gay people, are so hung up on this legal marriage with the marriage certificate. 
doesn't guarantee anything just because you have that. It used to not be. It used to be that the couples used to say, we're married to all their friends and relatives and etc. And I that mean, was that. I mean, I mean. Then the church stuck its big fat stinking nose into things. And, and they used to say, oh, you're living in sin. Yeah. Well, if you're living together and you are in love with one another and you are, the relationship is really good and it's working well, how is that different from if you have the piece of paper, the certificate, okay, we used and, to honor and, and you're the same couple that that are, uh, 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 where there's love and you, your compatibility and you're living together and everything's hunky dory, peach, peaches and cream. How is that different? The only difference is the piece of paper and the fee you had to pay for it. We used to honor common law marriage. It's the same thing. What, what, look, if something's going to go wrong in the relationship, whether you are uh, 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 seriously committed to somebody you're dating or whether you are legally married doesn't matter if something's gonna go wrong it's gonna go wrong if it's good something's gonna go right and and everything's gonna be happy it's going excuse me it's gonna happen either way Davis had refused to issue any marriage licenses rather than comply with the United States Supreme Court's ruling in June, legalizing gay marriage nationwide. Right. After ordering her to jail, the judge told her six deputy clerks that they too faced potential fines or jail time if they refused. All but one. The clerk's son, Nathan Davis, agreed to end her church-state standoff. A second couple, Timothy and Michael Long, got their license later on Friday, enduring a taunt from a man inside the office. The Longs did not respond, and a worker told the man to get out. Kim Davis, you may have been elected, but you're not above the law. I don't think anybody should be above the law. No one. Well, that includes the, the Bible does say the police, uh, military personnel, generals, admirals. You obey man when, until it conflicts with God's laws. But but that means you know. Who the great God is, doesn't it? But we're living in a under the United States Constitution in a secular society. This well, is not the said. this is not the world tomorrow. In those circumstances, God uh, says, "Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's." He listen. Jesus picked up Jesus picked up the coin when the people asked him what. What should we do? Well, Caesar wants taxes from us. What What should we do? He picked up the coin. He said, whose picture is on that? Caesar. Caesar's picture. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. So the Jews... And give to God so the that Jews, which is So the Jews were complaining about paying Caesar taxes? That's right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, you're, you, you have a secular job. And uh, you cannot override the United States Supreme Court. If they say gay marriage is legal, then you have to follow the rules and suck it up and, you know, issue the license. Or back off. Or quit. Or go into your little cubby room in the back and sit there while the other six clerks do the job. It's very simple. Hey, there you but go. No. That's an easy solution. She had to make a... Big it's a big spectacle, a yeah. scene, yeah. 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 She had to make a scene because these particular types of so-called Christians, these 
zealot evangelicals have to always make a show in everything they do. They show off when they pray in public. They they show off when they bitch and moan that they that their religion is not the law of the land, and they want to force their ways and their views upon everyone else. Handling snakes is showing off too, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I put it away. Oh. Taking up serpents. Ah. See, I didn't know you were going to bring it up. Uh. I, I would have kept the serpent here. But you 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 get the. The drift, you know. You saw the serpent already. Seven bells for the serpent. Continuing in the Kim Davis vein. Yes. The letter writer <sighs> should review his history book. As citizens, we are entitled to freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. The constitutional amendment was adopted so Americans would not be forced by the government to do things that went against their religious beliefs. So your suggestion was wise. If it bothers you that much, let one of your co-workers issue the gay couple of a marriage license. It's that easy. Of course. That's, you know, ask them, say, what, of course. gay couple here, could you do it for me? That's all. As the British did in their previous ruling of our country. Today, it seems, only those who hold to the tenets of Christianity are compelled by the government to violate their beliefs. I don't, brother. This is done via ridiculous Supreme Court rulings that are shoved down the throats of people. Someone else can issue marriage licenses to gay couples. Someone else can perform those marriages. Someone else can prescribe those morning after pills. And someone else can assist in those abortion procedures. Hear, hear. I don't really care how others live, as long as it doesn't affect me. Ugh. Why should the government be able to force morally sound citizens to violate their conscience? Morally sound citizens. <laughs> to force someone to choose between God's law and man's for the sake of so few is perilous and will not end well. Where would it all end? It's just like the banner I told you when we were having lunch. The, the woman was so funny. The woman is dressed like a, a waitress at a Red Lobster. She says, uh, uh, hello, greetings. My, I'm, I'm your waitress. Uh, my name is Kim. I, I just want to let you hello, know. Hello, Kim. Uh, hello, Kim. I, I would just like to let you know I will not be serving you any shellfish because it is, I am uh, using my religious freedom to not serve you this unclean uh, creature. Uh, this, yeah, it's against my... Uh, um, so where does it end, religious freedom? And I mentioned another example about Satanism. It goes on and on and on. Before you know it, you have total chaos throughout the United States because everybody is using this religious freedom excuse as a um, an okay to do what the hell they want. There was a time amongst the judges back in ancient Israel when every man did what he thought was right in his own eyes. They were without a king. Without a king. They were without a king, brother. Without a king. My reading of the United States Constitution uh -huh. does not disclose <laughs> any indication that Christianity <laughs> is the official religion of this country. No, it's not. Nowhere is there a religious requirement for elected office. Our Constitution does state that Congress will make no religion superior to another. None of it's proven. I am a conservative Christian. I have mixed feelings about same-sex marriage, however, the United States Supreme Court has upheld this right. As such, our elected officials must follow the law. If they have religious objections, they are free to resign. There was and still is a very good reason why our Founding Fathers insisted on keeping church and state separate 
they did not just pull it out of a hat like a magic trick. There's, there's very important reasons for it. And uh, I have my personal religious opinions, but they're, they're my beliefs. They, I, don't, I don't impose them on others in, in the secular world of government. But when you want to proselytize, convert, I don't believe in save it. souls. I don't do it. You will do what the Roman Catholic Church used to do, convert by torture. Or if you don't convert, we'll have the emperor kill you. Well, the, the simple as that, what, pal. The, what about the radic radical Islam? Don't they sort of same do, thing? Should do it. But I don't. Uh, I know people that believe in going around bugging everybody and proselytizing. Yeah. And I know they're they're evangelical, uh, uh, born again, holy rollers. They're they're part of that. Uh, uh, you know, the whole Bible to them is... Um, Increasing numbers. Is uh, um, Paul's letters. Apostle Paul's... Uh, Paul's letters. The whole Bible is Paul's letters. And they're, they're very, uh, very New Testament. Almost like the Old Testament doesn't really exist to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paul, everything's about Paul's letters and the uh, Ten Commandments were nailed to the cross. Uh-huh. Or the, the stake, or whatever Jesus was crucified on. You know, they were nailed. Stake. They, stake. Yes. They were nailed. So, you know, it's, it, 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 if it's not accurate to the Bible as a whole, I guess you would call it a sort of cult. Now, you see what I did last night? I posted the last page of Revelation concerning conservatives trying to rewrite the Bible. Uh -huh. You know, I uh -huh. just wanted people to know that I'm not just giving my opinion. I'm, I, I want to show them what these others are violating. But as you said earlier in the show, mm. these people cherry pick. They pick and choose yeah. what they want to yeah. believe if you don't, and what they want you to do. If you don't work, you don't eat. That's all they do. Oh, little one-liners like Henny Youngman. When he used to do Take my wife. Please. Please. Yeah. But they do not have the right not to follow the law based on their religious beliefs. These elected officials are elected by all citizens. And as such must serve all citizens of the community. And where do they get the money to pay their salaries? From all citizens. Because all citizens pay taxes. That pays their salary. So therefore they must be loyal and give proper service to all citizens. That's the secular... That, that's how it is. It's fair. Is it any wonder that those religious nuts despise secularism? Oh, I know they do. They despise it. No, they... Yeah, they despise it. They they want they want to set up a a a, a sort of a, a cultist fascist thing out. A, a, a form they want to be in control. Right, a, a form of uh, totalitarianism with their cult as uh, at the head, which I think I think it's more their 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 lust for power. Yeah, might be even greater than their devotion to the Lord. Well, it isn't to the Lord. It is to their perception of the Lord. Perception. Correct. If anyone needs proof as to why separation of church and state is so important, they should read what is going on in Rowan County, Kentucky. <clears throat> County Clerk Kim Davis has decided that her beliefs in God outweigh any laws and anyone else's beliefs. You know, Kentucky seems to be a real troublemaking state. Between Mitch McConnell, Rand Paul and his father there, and, and this woman over here, uh, Wolf County uh, 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 idiots, uh -huh. trailer park idiots, whatever you want to fucking call them. Uh, um, this Kim Davis. Boy, you know, for, for a state that has the Kentucky Derby and pretty good uh, bourbon whiskey, 
you sh and, and makes good baseball bats, you know, Lu the Louisville Slugger. Maybe they're all high on the whiskey. <laughs> you know, a lot of pain in the ass people from Kentucky. Obviously, she also believes that no god but her god is the real god. How does she know that? She has a bat phone to the real god? Well, she doesn't know that. Well, how does she know? But she's saying it. That's correct. She's a delusional uh, 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 nut. But people say a lot of things. That's like me saying that my Blackthorn Shillelagh has magical powers above all other magic wands in the universe. Doesn't Mr. Popoff say that? Doesn't Mr. Joel Olstein the, say the that? The miracle spring water draw. Yeah, right, exactly. Terror! <sighs> And wars in today's world can be directly attributed to just such beliefs. Yeah, that's a very important sentence. Organized religion has caused more wickedness and more deaths. That's why we got the First Amendment. And I'm sure, and I heard Jesse Ventura also say this about organized religion, nothing but trouble. That's Not why we got the First Amendment organized religion. I'm not talking about... They knew how much trouble the priest yeah. caused in history. I'm not talking about the the first early Christians, the beginning of Christ's church, where, you know, they they, they paid attention to the, to the actual scriptures. You know, like, like, like Martin Luther paid attention when he, when, he, when he went up against the Pope back then. You know, the, the Reformation there. You know, I mean, I'm not talking about that which is a small flock. I'm talking about all the uh, false prophets and the... Uh, yeah, false prophets. In free countries, we cannot afford to have government influenced by any religion. The only way to keep our country free is to avoid putting our government in a position of deciding whether to apply civil law in any particular circumstance. On top of that, the various interpretations of religious laws come into play. This confusion could eventually be followed by a civil war, fought on many fronts, based on man's many different interpretations of religion. More war because of religion. That has not been proven yet. So, people fighting, people killing, based on something that is not proven interesting. Versus science, which is either theory or it's proven with facts. You know, it's like, um, I trust science. Uh, I trust science, but I have my beliefs, which is uh, faith, which is based on hope. Faith, faith is hope. Like Bill Morrow says, faith is nothing but hope. But there is a difference between uh, having a wicked perception of God and the Bible, having selfish motives, compared to having selfless, compassionate, you know, good motives. Like, this is why... I, I think Pope Francis is so popular today because he is so much different than the Catholic Church of the past. He's refreshingly different. All of these, you know, all of these people who are more Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, mm -hmm. Ben Carson, Fiorini, yeah. oh, the God. Pope Francis, okay. they are all hitting populist themes and we are in a milu a situation today where the worker the poor the middle class is being beaten down daily so obviously we are going to have and respond to populists the veterans veterans too they are furious <coughs> they know they're being uh, um, forsaken they're 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 being neglected ignored thrown under the bus thrown under the bus they know it and they're pissed about it I'm not talking about the veterans who make these banners 
all dressed in uniform, smiling with, you know, hugging G.W. Bush. You know, all these flag-waving Yankee Doodle Dandy veterans, you know, making up these, uh, you know, bullshit conservative banners. Mission accomplished. Yeah, mission accomplished. Rob, well, da, rah, 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 rah. Meanwhile, they don't give a damn about you if you come back alive. <laughs> you know, so, but like you said, they're hitting that raw nerve. Pope Francis, uh, Bernie Sanders, it's what they say that's making them popular by a landslide. It's an understanding by the middle class, the poor, the vets, the everybody downtrodden right. that they have been screwed now, for at least the last 40 years. Correct. Now Donald Trump is doing a similar thing with all the people who want to use the brown skin man uh, the immigrants of color as a scapegoat for their problems. The people that already have racist feelings, but Donald Trump and many Republicans from the South are feeding off of that frustration. So instead of coming out, coming up with real solutions, yeah, real solution, or saying, "Look, we've been fucking you for, for all these years. You know, we've been selling out you voters and." We apologize for screwing you over. And instead of telling them the real truth that these people they voted for are totally corrupt, they'll use the brown man, the, the immigrant of color, and the black man as scapegoats for their misery. Well, we wouldn't have half the troubles that we have with immigration, illegal immigration, if the corporations weren't hiring these people can't blame the poor you can't blame for the less poor. than minimum wage you can't blame the poor Mexicans for wanting, for, to eat. for wanting to put food on the table for their families and mm. coming over here I mean but they're like making them out like they're demonizing them yeah but why are they sneaking over the border because hold on where's my because American companies are hiring them and paying them if the, um, the, the stingy, greedy American companies would not hire the illegal immigrant, right. the Mexicans, immigrants, then they won't be so anxious to cross the border and sneak over here. So they're blaming the poor Mexican for coming here and they're taking our jobs, you know, all the numbskulls. They're taking our jobs, our jobs. Blame the no, companies. The, the people, Blame the companies that are hiring them. Yes, the people who are taking our jobs are those who are shipping them overseas. Same mentality, same type of companies. And what? guess one of the uh, presidential candidates who actually did that? Carly I, Fiorini. Ugly, ugly bitch with a ton of makeup on. Yeah, with a crooked mouth. <laughs> Yeah, Carly Fiorini, uh, Donald Trump's apparel, by the way. Donald Trump is uh, so busy bashing China, they sh they showed in, in his uh, over in overpriced uh, Donald Trump designer shirts or suits that says Made in China on the label. Hip a a lot of these famous people got caught with their clotheslines, you know, being made in Bangladesh yeah. and in Taiwan or whatever. Remember, you know? Kathy Lee Gifford was yeah. uh, had crocodile tears running yeah. down her face. I didn't know. I, I didn't know, know children I, were used to make yeah. to make my clothing in the third world country. Yeah. I didn't know this. What the hell did you expect? They got no laws. Their 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 uh, uh, unions aren't uh, tough enough. To get laws passed in their, be in their benefit? No, nah, because these third world countries most likely probably have like totalitarian military. Most of them do. Look at South America. Corrupt military dictatorships. Yes. And everybody is. Africa. Uh, and everybody's easily paid off, and, and the cops don't make much money in those countries, so they're easily paid off. And, uh, you know. Uh, it's all corrupt. It's all corrupt, you know. You uh, here in Colombia, you know. You got an insurance policy, and then the uh, insurance company decides, well, we, you know, we don't want to file your claim. We don't want to pay out, you know. In other words, it's a Republican's dream where a company can take your money and not give you something. 
yeah. in return. It's like it's like the, the the legal ability to screw you and rob you. They love to have captive access, like uh, under Pinochet or any of the dictators. You get the big corporations in there, man, and they're making a killing because you know they're what? protected by Pinochet. And you know what? There's a banner. I saw a banner, Dr. Bill, of a, a, a two-sided photo. One, one was a, a man that looked like a biker, all tattoos, long oh, yeah. hair, okay, with the cut-off um, uh, denim vest, and then they showed somebody on Wall Street with a, with a fa uh, fancy suit and tie, all you know, and they said that our biggest crooks are in suit and ties. Yes. The biggest crooks around and are in suit and ties. And not one of them went to jail. And not one of them went to jail. That's good. Wall Street. But you got people that had a bit of marijuana on them, serving life sentences. Hey. Et cetera. Scott Walker and Chris Christie and uh, and uh, Rick Scott, I'm sure, have a lot of dirt on them. And you don't see uh, you don't see them in a courtroom yet. I hear that they may be after Mr. Cheney. Oh yeah, I, I, I saw something for like the that. money he made from Halliburton mm -hmm. in the Iraq War. You know what's going to happen if Cheney goes down. You know he's not going down alone. Oh, of course not. There's no way Dick Cheney's going down alone. Cool. He's going to blow the whistle on the Bush family. That would be nice. If he knows he's going down for the count, he's taking the Bushies with him. That would and be that nice. would be so... such a great reason to get drunk and celebrate. <laughs> speaking of Trump. No, I said drunk. Trump? Oh, speaking oh, of Trump. Okay. Speaking of Trump. Yeah. When reading a transcript of Donald Trump's speech announcing his entrance into the 2016 presidential race, one can only be reminded of high school students running for class funds. It's all personality without substance. His language is replete with amazing incredible and wonderful is that what he says when he looks in the mirror he says he's going to make america great again oh really yeah. essentially we are observing an ego out of control oh he's definitely egomaniacal a non-stop braggart oh without a doubt who needs to demonstrate imagined superiority. Hey, just just see how much he lights up in front of a camera if you compliment him compared to other people. You must treat him fairly. That's yeah, all he has. Fairly? Tell him wonderful things. That's fair to him, right? Okay. Trump, whose business history is imperfect, <laughs> whose personal life is reality TV material. Like Fiorina, her business, her history sucks. Him, yeah. Has never served this country. He only serves himself. Well, that's why they called him the businessman, Donald Trump, during the uh, debate. He was known as the businessman, Donald Trump. I mean, Bernie Sanders has a ton of experience yeah he's been in, uh, in uh, this local governments of 30 some years from the from the time he was elected uh, mayor of Burlington Vermont until he was he was a congressman too at one time yes. right? then he became a state senator and then a senator right and the beauty is Bernie Sanders of old is, is pretty the Bernie much Sanders of today. is the Bernie Sanders of today he is not what you would call a flip-flopping politician. Many people are having a hard time figuring out the phenomenon that is Donald Trump. Well, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's entertaining as all hell. He's a spectacle. He's, his facial expressions, his stupid hair, the things he says. I know he's a, he's a 
he's a hateful bigot, but he's funny. You know, he, he, Americans like to be entertained. They need not look no further than how President Obama has governed for six and a half years. He has disregarded enforcement of laws that do not fit his political agenda. He has had numerous pieces of legislation passed that were in direct conflict with the wishes of a majority of the American people. Trump is the instrument of frustrated Americans whose concerns have been totally ignored by the liberal media. Yeah, the, the so-called, the mythical liberal media. Yeah. Yeah. Former professional wrestling star Jimmy Jimmy Superfly Snuka Formerly of Clifton, New Jersey. Well, that's been a while since he's been there. Was charged on Tuesday with third degree murder and involuntary manslaughter in the death of his mistress more than three decades ago. Lehigh County prosecutors announced the results, <coughs> excuse me, of a grand jury probe into the death of Nancy Argentino, 23, of New York. Snuka, who had been at a World Wrestling Federation taping at the Allentown Fairgrounds, told police shortly after Argentino's death that he had returned to the couple's Whitehall Township hotel room to find her unresponsive in bed. She was pronounced dead at a hospital several hours later. An autopsy determined she died <coughs> excuse me of traumatic brain injuries and had more than three dozen cuts and bruises and concluded her injuries were consistent with being hit with a stationary object. How could you be hit with a stationary object if the object if is... If there's somebody pounding your head against it. Oh, your head <laughs> is going against the stationary object. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Remember what the cops say with the excuse when the guy's head was bruised and everything like that? He kept hitting his head into my knee! That's like when this, uh, this fat, this really f fat guy, it was years ago, he was in prison um, uh, for um, uh, uh, having sex with a, with a minor, a female, and he kept on saying, well, the, the girl kept on r uh, shoving into my pelvic area. I was minding my own business and, and you know, and she kept on thrusting, uh, going up against me. I, I didn't move my body. And I, I, it's just ludicrous, you know. At the time, forensic pathologist Isidore Mihalakis wrote that the case should be investigated as a homicide until proven otherwise. A June 2013 investigation by the Morning Call of Allentown raised questions about the case. Lehigh County District Attorney Jim Martin said that Argentino's sisters approached him after the story ran, prompting him to give the case another look. The grand jury's report said that Snuka had provided more than a half dozen shifting accounts of Argentino's injuries. At first, telling paramedics he hit her during an argument outside their hotel room and she, 
struck her head on the concrete. Then, claiming to the police, she slipped and yep. fell during a bathroom break on their way to the hotel. The grand jury said it heard evidence that Snuka beat Argentino in a hotel room in Syracuse, New York, in January of 1983 four months before her death and repeatedly assaulted his wife Sharon in 1993. Yeah, well, um, uh, professional wrestling legend Hall of Famer, the late great um, Nature Boy Buddy Rogers lived right next door to the Snookers in uh, Camden County and he, when he was alive, he, he would say that uh, Jimmy Snooker's wife would ring his doorbell, battered and beat up, and see. And he, he claimed they did drugs together. You know, whatever. I mean, I, I feel bad. I feel very bad. Uh, I mean, the poor guy is, is in his early 70s, and he's seriously, gravely ill right now, terminally ill. I, I don't think he is going to need any punishment from the system. I think life, <coughs> fate is punishing him enough. So, you know, I don't know. I happen to know Jimmy Snooker uh, through uh, when I used to work in pro wrestling in, in the independent circuit in Northeastern New Jersey and he knows me and he's on my Facebook friends list and I sat next to him at the promoter's uh, wedding reception. He was at my table with his daughter. I mean, I really feel rotten about it, but I think he is suffering enough. You know what I mean? It's like, he's really very sick. What about his wife? Did she suffer enough? Which one? With the marry? The wife? The wife? The woman he was married to? Or By the, being killed. Or the, oh no, that wasn't his wife. Well, what was that? A girlfriend? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Girlfriend, well, Argentino. Yeah, yeah, she. Um, they didn't. The wife's name is Sharon. Yeah. That. Uh, how many does the state? How many times he was married? Uh, no. Well, he's with a present wife. I don't know if that's his wife, the the mother of the the, the children he has, um, or if that's the second wife. I'm not sure. I don't know. Snuka is now 72 and living in Waterford Township in Camden, Camden County. Yeah, not to be confused with the, the dirty, rotten slum of Camden, New Jersey. <gasps> High crime area. He has long maintained his innocence. It's a suburb of Philadelphia. Yeah. Nicknamed Superfly, the Fiji native was known for diving from the ropes and even the top of steel cages in a career that spanned four decades. Oh yeah, he's without a doubt a Hall of Famer, without a doubt one of the greats. I mean, I, I always idolized him as a kid, didn't think I was going to actually meet him and converse with him and have lunch with him and others at a Japanese sushi buffet and, you know, and get to know him a little, little bit. You know, I didn't, who knew, you know, fate is funny, but uh, yeah, he's definitely one of the greats, but you know what's really rotten? I read that Vince McMahon, the WWE, dropped him from the Legends group. Just like they give they gave Hulk Hogan the boot for uh, using oh, a... Oh, how moral Mr. Vince McMahon is. He's very immoral, uh, and he, he runs a family-oriented show now. Very high in morals. I got news for you. You probably pissed Jimmy Snuka off by dropping him from the Legends uh, group. And you know what? If Jimmy Snuka is in the corner in, in court, let me tell you something. This drama is not over yet. There might be implications directed towards Vince McMahon and the WWE. Because there's... I read the story. And uh, 
it's not, from what I understand, Vince paid some people off. Nicknamed the Superfly. Yeah, we know that already, yeah. The Fiji native was known for diving, etc., etc. He was admitted into the World Wrestling Entertainment Hall of Fame in 1996. Mm -hmm. WWE expresses its continued sympathy to the Argentino family for their loss, the organization said on Tuesday. Ultimately, this legal matter will be decided by our judicial system. Snooko was arraigned on Tuesday and sent to Lehigh County Jail but he was expected to post a portion of his $100,000 bail. Argentino's family won a wrongful death lawsuit against Snuka in 1985. Well, there's a lot more to this drama and uh, it will unfold. It's not over yet. But the WWE has a habit of uh, playing the uh, the high morality role. Uh, you know, as soon as one of the legends uh, gets involved in a little controversy, they have a habit of dismissing you, of firing you, or letting you go, whatever. You know, almost like there's a there's a, a, an aura of innocence surrounding the WWE, almost like the old Miss America pageant when, uh, um, oh, what the hell's her name again? Yeah, if, if somebody in the Miss America pageant, even if you won Miss America, if you had any, any percentage of controversy, or, or scandal, or anything risque, they would take away your crown. crown. Vanessa Williams, risque photographs. Ooh. Scantily clad or naked. Yes, Ooh. they took away her crown. I just remembered Vanessa Williams. Uh, yeah, and that's how the WWE is behaving. I heard that uh, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, I heard that these wrestlers like John Cena, uh, uh, either him personally or the WWE get paid they're getting paid for making visits to terminally ill children. I was oh, told. how sweet. Oh, magnanimous and philanthropical and so full of compassion these, these, all these multi-billionaires are. Oh, how wonderful. I would say the same thing about Bill Gates. Uh, you know, some people say he's very charity oriented too. Yeah, sure. Yeah. My ass. As long as he can write it off his taxes. Right. And the, and the cost of labor, incidentally, is a tax write-off. Dear Abby. All right. We'll do this for the road. I got I to gotta pay a visit. I was recently the target of a romance scam on a popular singles website. Oh, really? After being a divorcee for 15 years, I decided to try online dating which has become more acceptable these days and more common and more popular either yeah minutes after i went online someone asked to chat with me oh that you're going to get tons of that if you're a woman you're halfway decent looking he said he was a widower with an adult daughter and a jeweler by trade now and her eyeballs lit up when she heard jeweler. Oh yeah, I know how these American women are. Oh. Living near me, but returning to Florida the next day with ultimate plans to relocate to my area. Oh, he must have went to Jared. Remember that stupid commercial? He must have went to Jared. Excuse me. He mentioned he was originally from Germany. Uh-oh. And had an accent. After three weeks of chatting, but only a short, garbled phone conversation, he asked for a favor. He was attending a jewelry show, 
and needed me to send his diamond supplier money to pay for a shipment. He made it sound urgent and gave me a name and an address in Ghana where he could get the best quality diamonds at the best price. All along I had kept my guard up but his request confirmed for me that it was a scam. When I googled the Ghana name and address, it came back, Ghana Scammer. A couple of telltale signs people should be aware of. First, if you don't talk to them or their cell phone seems to have a very bad connection, it's likely they are not in the country. Second, if you can't meet in person, it's likely they are pretending to be someone else. He told me that his email had been hacked and then someone tried to have a conversation from his email asking me personal questions about my retirement funds. Please help me warn others about these types of scams. Gladly, this is uh, Dear Abby's response. Gladly. It takes courage and trust to open oneself up to a stranger you hope could become the love of your life. Romance scammers know this can make people vulnerable. According to the Federal Trade Commission, this particular type of scammer typically tries to lure potential victims away from a dating website and communicate privately by email or instant message. Ah, uh, so I am back. According to a recent FBI report, romance scams made up more than 10% of the 800 million in internet crimes committed against Americans last year. I'm glad you're reading this because I have a lot to say. Readers, as much as you might want to believe the impassioned appeals, Guard your hearts and your wallets, your bank accounts from these scammers. Report them to your dating website and the FTC. Protect yourselves by vis visiting USA.gov slash scams dash and dash frauds. That's a long one. They should have shortened that, that web link. No kidding. They should shorten them all. Well, if you didn't get it, just replay this part of the video and write it down because this is a, I mean, I, I was detoxifying a bit. And, but my ears were open. I heard the word Ghana in this reading. Ghana, West Africa. Let me tell you something. With internet dating, online dating, as well as uh, social media, even Facebook, there, this scam is huge. There are people who use fake phony profiles with fake phony photographs of usually uh, very attractive young women that mm. look like models or or just real cute college co-eds or they're usually white women and uh, many of them with blonde hair whatever it doesn't matter or brunettes but they're all very attractive women and the people that contact not just women women get it with attract uh, picture photos of attractive men the women get it the men get approached too online both. I'm talking about both. The men get it a lot. And the person uh, uh, is very clever.
probably well trained on doing it, uh, pretends to be this other individual, and then all of a sudden they try to lure them into contacting them on, let's say, um, uh, it could be Yahoo Messenger or maybe Skype or, or through email. And they usually have, eventually they send you a sob story about their life. Usually they're very similar stories. And when the stories are similar, you know something's up. You know, uh, and then eventually they ask you based on a sob story to wire them money yeah. and usually they say um, well when you ask them where's your location exactly they say well I'm from Europe or I'm from this city in the United States but right now I am uh, I'm away on, on a job in Ghana when you hear the word Ghana or Nigeria <gasps> The huge boing red flag should come up. It's a scam, African scam, where they I hear they're trained to do it, and uh, they use phony photos and phony profiles, and they they do it through online dating. It's it's infested like cockroaches. Social media, online dating, and they prey upon people from first world countries, men and women, to try to sucker you. Uh, into uh, wiring them money and 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 it always ends up being that they're in Ghana so I, I know I know the scam way ahead of time so I was just toying with the person I says uh, so uh, what is what is a a, a, a beautiful young uh, f uh, female that looks like a uh, a swimsuit model uh, what are you doing uh, living in uh, a uh, fourth or fifth world country or third world whatever you want to call it what do you do? what is a woman like you with all this designer clothes and looking like you doing living in uh, uh, such a primitive area with uh, diseases and poverty yeah. and uh, and wild animals and yeah. all this stuff feeble answer you know I says uh, and 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 you say you're staying in a hotel uh -huh. what hotel chain would have a location in 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 wilderness in in in, in Africa with uh, 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 lions and leopards and hyenas and whatever running around what what hotel chain would have a branch in such an area or, or some of them will say motel. There's no motels. There's no motels out in the wilderness of Africa, in the wilds of Africa. Mm. What motels? Motel Six. So you know. We'll uh, leave the line on for you. Well, you know, I mean, I knew at, way ahead of time that this was a scammer, but I was playing around. Eventually, they got frustrated and pissed and took and just disappeared. Yeah. And you know, eventually, I said, "Look, I know who you are." Mm. You don't know who it is. It could be some, most cases, it's some dude trying to speak romantically like a female. And it's not always uh, a female from America. Sometimes it's, um, you know, it could be a European woman, a Russian, or whatever. But usually they use American, uh, they steal American photographs. They impersonate that person. It's all out of duping you out of money, and and the biggest crock of shit. Uh, they talk real romantic, like like a Hallmark card written in the 1950s. The darling and dear, uh, if you send me money, I want to be with you so much. Uh, but I don't have the money to fly to your city. But if you wire me the money, I will fly to your city, and we will be together. I love. I says first of all. <laughs> First of all, how could you use the word love a commitment if you barely uh, uh, chatted with me in, 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 in text? You, you don't even know me and you were talking about flying to my city with all this talk of love. You don't even know who I am. You 
just know by texting. You know, yeah, but they know you're vulnerable. See, they think they they, they, they think upon. they know I'm vulnerable. They, they don't know I'm upon. slick. No, um, no, no. I'm speaking in the collective. Collectively, the, the well, vulnerable. You know, in other you. words, you. Do, yeah, but not everybody that joins a dating site. Trust me, a lot of professional, a lot of busy people hey, join the, dating really? sites. It's no longer the the lonely, poor woman no. or man that can't find anybody, and they're lonely and they can't, you know, a lonely hearts column. It's no, it's not like that. They're not sad sacks anymore. They're people from all walks of life. Yes. That join. But they are vulnerable in many ways. They may be vulnerable in time. They don't have the time or commitment to take on a long uh, 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 online relationship before they want to meet you. So the person starts with a, I'm coming to your town. I'll be there in tw five that days. That sounds pretty fit. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you can you know come what? and meet that me. That sounds you know? not only foolish as all hell, but dangerous. No kidding. For, especially for a, a, a lady, a woman. To be meeting a man that she doesn't even know. It used to happen a lot. You know, I don't dangerous. know what it does today. I haven't kept up with it. With fetish people. Right. I mean, there was a guy who was killing these girls and putting them in 55-gallon drums. A serial killer. Yeah. After he, he would give Very them the bullshit and I would meet you, uh, 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 you know, and uh, but we could enjoy bondage or whatever they had in, uh, in uh, together. Well, and then he'd end up killing them. See, today's on, you know? today's online dating websites have a, what they call verification, where you you a person would uh, oh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, upload a copy of their driver's license or uh, their you know to they're trying to protect the members. Fine. To verify now, that's step one. Step two. Is I highly recommend Skype for video calling to get to know the person. First of all, you need to validate who they are. Mm -hmm. Don't go by their photographs. They could be phony photographs. They could be old photographs. You know, we, a lot of these women, uh, they'll send you, they'll, they'll post a blurry photo of them far away. You know, and you're trying to make out what they look like. Or if it's a woman that you only see them from the chin up, she's 400 pounds. She's Honey Boo Boo's mother. And sometimes those obese ones, they send you a, a picture of a 16-year-old blonde. Their daughter. You know, whatever. They'll use the photo. They'll, well, they'll use take the photo, a photo of their, off the internet. They don't have to be their daughter. It could be anybody, anybody. But, but beware of the blurry ones far away. Or even Ooh. if they're not blurry. If they're far away, they're ugly motherfuckers. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is verify them on Skype with video call. Technology sometimes could be a very wonderful thing. In this case, a you tool. Need a tool. You a need tool. to verify the person and you need to get to know them. What better way than to chat with somebody for free on mm -hmm. Skype? It's better than the phone. You're seeing them talk. You're seeing what they look like. You, their mannerisms. You get. You, you're chatting with them. You. You see the the the, the, uh, the their apartment that they're in. The, the room. Their surroundings. Right. Yeah. Or it doesn't have to be their apartment. People could do video chat with you from their smartphone. They could be in a supermarket. They could be in a shopping mall. They could be anywhere, mm -hmm. and and they can literally walk around, skyping with you. And you see them walking, or, or you see them driving, or whatever. It's a wonderful tool. Use it. Verify the people you're with. Get to know them. See if, it, if you mentally click with them before you meet them. Very important. You taught me that. See if you mentally congeal. I mean, if you mentally click together. If you, if you got the, the, the mental... Uh, um, vibes, not vibes. Uh, chemistry. Chemistry. There you go. The mental chemistry, and 
of course with Skype you will see if you have physical chemistry unless the person's got a piece of shit old webcam that's it's crap but you know, usually most most usually computers now laptops tablets PCs they come with a built-in mic and a webcam yeah so, but use it it's a great tool mm -hmm. and look for the for the red flags look for the signals you know so, too much too soon somebody who's too sappy with you you know too romantic with you with you you don't even know them uh, they want to meet you right away but they they're white and they look beautiful but they but they're in the deepest darkest Africa big red flag I had a young lady the other yeah. day wanted to befriend me on Facebook uh-huh and she started out with, uh, I want to know that handsome man. Oh, another <laughs> thing. All of them have another thing in common. Their cell phones are conveniently broke. Uh, they don't give any phone numbers out. Their cell phones are all broke. They don't work. Okay. How could that be? Everybody's cell phone is broke? Yes. How can it be? It's impossible. I see patterns. I I I know there's patterns. Capitalism. Oh, my cell phone's broke. Oh, can't talk to you on the phone. Cell phone's okay. broke. What about okay. Skype? Uh, 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 don't don't, uh, don't have a webcam. Okay, cell phone's broke. Don't have a webcam. Interesting. Interesting. Fuck you. <laughs> Well, I don't have a webcam program, but I have a webcam, and it works with Skype. Hey, man, I plugged in old webcams before without uh, uh, without the um, the driver, you know, yeah. the disc. Yeah. And lo and behold, sure. it works. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. I mean, now I have a nice high-definition Logitech webcam. And let me tell you something. The mics are so great. Forget about your your computer mic. The mics in the webcam are so sensitive. They blows away any old-fashioned computer mic. Blows it away. Anyway, be careful, please. Mm -hmm. Be careful out there, single people. We'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you. It, it's been a very very unrehearsed, ad-lib, unplanned, very uh, 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 invigorating mm -hmm. Labor Day weekend 2015. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.